Hi everyone, Dr. Kennedy here, and I just wanted to post a quick video with some last-minute tips for the 2020 AP Statistics exam, which is later this afternoon. So I'm proud of all of you, all of my students. I know you've all been working really hard, studying and getting ready and doing all the materials I've been posting. Um, but here are 10 tips, and these are not a top 10, these are not in any order. It's just off the top of my head what I thought of this morning might be helpful to some of you. So hopefully this helps at least one person. Uh, my first tip is to write out your responses. I don't recommend you type them because of the symbols involved in any math course. But in stats we use mu and sigma and p with a hat on it and x with a bar. You don't want to be fumbling around looking for those special symbols. Um, so I would suggest that you neatly write out your responses to the free response questions, um, which is all the questions, and then upload a picture. The only people who should be typing are people that did a practice exam typing and were successful and are fluent with finding the uh, mathematical symbols and everything like that. Uh, but for the, if you haven't done that, I would not recommend uh, you type. Write neatly in black pen, dark, something that picks up well, take a good picture and then upload it. Tip number two is have all of your supplies ready to go and with you. So you should have your calculator with working batteries. You should have your textbook if you have a textbook. You should have any of the other cheat sheets or note sheets that I've posted or that you can get off of the Dropbox under the College Board AP YouTube Live review videos. I'll put some links down in the description so that you guys can uh, access that stuff. Okay, so make sure you have all of your stuff so you can find definitions quickly and stuff like that. My third tip is make sure your Wi-Fi is working um, and a good idea would be to tell your parents, tell your family members, siblings, stay off the Wi-Fi during this time that I'm completing the exam so that there's no issues and that your Wi-Fi is working uh, quickly. All right, so try to minimize the number of devices that other people are using if they don't have to use it at that time. Number four, write complete sentences. Okay, so when they're asking you to explain something, write complete sentences, don't abbreviate, don't write a sentence fragment. You know why I don't like sentence fragments? Because they. Okay, tip number five is uh, don't use variables, don't reference variables that you did not define and define them clearly. So if you say the probability of x equals 0.5 but you never defined what x was, you might lose credit on that. Okay, so make sure you clearly define any variable that you're going to use. And also, speaking of which, when you're defining a variable, let's say you're defining mu as the uh, mean hospital stay length or something like that, right? You want to define mu as a mean. Make sure you use the word mean. Don't just say mu equals hospital stay or something like that. Or p has to equal a proportion of blah, blah, blah. So clearly define your variables. Tip number six, label whatever you enter into the calculator. So if you're writing down calculator notation, like normal CDF, 1.75 comma infinity, don't just put those numbers put the numbers and then label them. So draw an arrow to that first number, 1.75, and call that left endpoint or lower bound. If you put in the mean and standard deviation, label them mu, sigma. Okay, so calculator lingo is okay to use if you label each number that you enter. Tip number seven. This is maybe the most important tip. Context is key. When you're explaining a result, when you're answering a question, you have to use the context. Don't just say, we reject the null and we have significant evidence of a relationship. That's not enough. That's too general. You have to refer to whatever the question is about. Refer to units. Refer to the variables. So you have to use context. Okay? Please, please, please. That's my number one tip is use context. All right, tip number eight is make sure you know the difference between right and left skew. Remember, the skew direction is where the tail is longer. So a right skew has a longer tail to the right. And don't forget about how that affects your data. The tail, the longer tail, the direction of the skew, pulls the mean in that direction. Okay? But the median, remember, is resistant. So the median will be closer to the hump of the data, but the mean will be pulled towards the skew because it's not resistant. Make sure you know the difference between type 1 and type 2 errors, right? A, two, a type 1 error is where you reject the null, but you shouldn't have. A type 2 error is where you fail to reject the null, but you should have. So make sure you review those. 
And my number 10 tip, my final tip is make sure you know how to interpret a p-value. When they say interpret the p-value, the p-value came out to 0 0.03. That means that there is a 3% probability, or the probability is 0 0.03, of re obtaining a result at least as extreme as the one we observed under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so the way I just said it was kind of a little bit off the top of my head, but that's one way to say it. So assuming the null hypothesis is true, there's a 3% chance of obtaining an observed result at least as extreme as the one that we did. Okay, and again, use context when you're explaining that. All right, and that's it. Those are my tips for the 2020 AP Stats exam. Good luck, everybody. Do your best, and may the math be with you.